Welcome back to Ostrich Investing. Uh, today we're going to talk about ZCL, again another company that we um, did a review of on the channel earlier, walked through the bull, bear and base case scenarios. ZCL reported their Q3 results on November 1st. Uh, the results were poor, but it was really the outlook that had investors concerned. This video is going to review the results and discuss the impact to investors, including dividend coverage. So let's jump into it. I've pulled up the chart uh, in Yahoo Finance, and you can see that the year-to-date performance for the stock, uh, it's been a tough year. If you go back to April, the stock was up a little over $12 a share, and then it's just sort of been a smooth ski slope ride down uh, through the balance of the year. When they released results on November 1st, you can see here on November 2nd, uh, there's a big spike in volume. Over 2 million shares were traded the following day, and that's approximately 7% of the outstanding shares. So uh, clearly some investors uh, stepped out of the story after seeing the results and obviously other buyers came in. But the stock sold off significantly over the course of the year. It's now trading at $5.90. So if we jump into the Q3 release, here we have it. Again, you can see the results weren't great. Uh, revenue of 49.7 million was down 5%. Uh, gross profit down 1.6 million or 14%, so a little bit more significant. Adjusted EBITDA was down about 13%. So results were down, uh, and what the new CEO, again, new CEO here, Ted Redmond talks about, uh, revenue for the quarter was down. He, he talks, he really calls out the declining margins. So the fundamental issue facing ZCL is declining margins. We are committed to reversing this decline, and over the last two months, ZCL management team has conducted a detailed assessment. Boom, 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 boom. And again, uh, he talks about by 2020, the plan will restore our margins back to the historically strong levels of 2014 through 2017. So again, talking about 2019 as maybe being a bit of a, a transition year. One thing to note on the results, if we scroll forward a little bit, is the backlog's actually up. So while revenue was down, the backlog's up about 18%. So not all bad news for ZCL. And then if we go to the outlook, uh, they do give an outlook for 2019. They do expect revenue in 2019 to improve over 2018. And they expect margins to gradually improve as they implement their profit improvement, improvement plan. Sorry. And specifically with respect to Q4, the last quarter of this year, uh, management expects lower profit margins in Q4 of 2018 compared to Q4 of 2017 due to combination of factors. And I believe they expect similar revenue, although I'm not seeing that right now. Either way, they do expect lower profitability this Q4 relative to the previous quarter. So if we jump into their investor presentation now, I believe on slide 24, let's see here. So on slide 24, you get a good picture of, of the revenue story. Uh, over the last five years, revenue had, had increased nicely from 132 up to about 188. But you can see in 2018, the dark green represents the year-to-date period. So you can see it's tracking behind the last uh, year-to-date period from 2017 and would expect that they're not going to make up that ground uh, in the last quarter. Same story on EBITDA. Sorry, here they talk about orders being stable and steady, so that is important to note. The revenue story, you know, maybe it's de decreasing a little bit, but it's not uh, decreasing materially. The, the story is really in the margins. So let's just scroll down to EBITDA, or gross margins here, sorry. And here you can see uh, what the CEO was talking about. In historically, gross margins in that 22 to 24% range, the last 12 months they've dropped to 19%. And so one of his key objectives is to get those margins 
back up. And we'll talk about what's driving that in a second. We'll talk about it right now. Uh, so some of the key impacts, the company talked about increasing resin input costs, which is a key input cost for their fiberglass tanks. They're also, they also talked about increased labor costs and losing some key employees in, um, in some of the areas where they have facilities, have tightened labor markets. And lastly, the bullet down below here, talk about competitive pricing pressures. So they're not the only ones that sell these fiberglass tanks, even though they do have a leading market share. Um, they're, they have not been able to pass along price increases to all of their customers because of competitive pressures. So there's three key reasons why the margins are down. If we keep moving through the presentation, here's adjusted EBITDA. And so you can see, here's where it becomes more acute. A uh, combination of revenue down slightly, but with margins down uh, uh, meaningfully, you've got EBITDA over the trailing 12 months of 25 million, which compares to 31 to 33 million over the last two years. So, you know, again, uh, fairly material decrease. Earnings per share, see a similar trend. So 51 cents over the last 12 months. And just a few more charts here that they've got. And they do a great job actually at, at, at putting these charts together over the five years. I always really appreciate, not to get uh, too sidetracked here, I do appreciate when investor relations department tell a story, particularly when it's not um, the most sugar-coated story to tell. Like here, ZCL's results are, are down over previous years, but they're giving the investor a great visual in terms of the results. So return on capital employed is down, but still 21% um, is, uh, is still quite a strong uh, uh, return on capital metric. And lastly, debt to adjusted EBITDA. One of the key strengths here is the balance sheet. There's really no debt. There's $1.9 million of debt on the balance sheet. And so I'm over in the earnings call transcript at seekingalpha.com. So shout out to them. They do a great job at putting these transcripts together. And you can clearly see that the analyst that covers the story is caught by surprise. Uh, this is sort of a, a big bath by the new CEO, so to speak. Um, and the first question is, uh, I find it entertaining. I don't know where to start. I read the MDNA and it kind of left the impression that you picked up a broken company. And it's, well, maybe I should have been more aware of how bad things got, but I wasn't under the impression that there were this many things to fix. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that margins were outperforming and everything was going smoothly. And now you've got this big return to profitability or profit improvement plan. And when I go through some of the things like where you say you're going to moderate the pace of upgrading an investment by setting aside a more manageable amount of money each period for that purpose, my first question would be, what does that say about what was being done before? Uh, so clearly there's some shock and awe and surprise um, in the results for investors. So what's the bottom line? Revenue is actually fairly steady, but trending, uh, trending slightly down. Uh, margins is the key to the story here. They've decreased uh, fairly meaningfully. Uh, you know, a couple percent when your margins are only in the low 20s to begin with uh, is material. Earnings per share is going to be lower for 2018. We, we did see that in the investor presentation. Does it come in for the full year at 45 cents to 50 cents? Probably somewhere in that range. Um, the dividend's currently 54 cents a share, so would not be covered on an earnings basis. But the balance sheet is clean. There's almost zero debt, uh, so the company does have a lot of flexibility going forward. And a key will be to watch backlog and margins as we head into 2019. That's it for this video. Hope, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, for more content, please head to ostrichinvesting.com. Uh, and until next time, don't bury your head in the sand.